Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're going to have a look at the weather next week to 10 days. For today's video, this will take us around the uh, 26th of December, Boxing Day. Um, I will be able to extend out a little bit beyond that, actually, uh, with the GFS, which uh, runs around two weeks. So that's getting us just about to New Year. Um, now, so uh, I'll bring you up to date with all the latest developments in the stratosphere, and then we'll see what's going on uh, in terms of the weather for the next uh, week or two. Uh, of course, I've had a, a bit of a stinking cold over the past uh, couple of days, so I've got quite a nasty cough. It's a little bit better today, but uh, I expect I'll still have to stop and have a bit of a cough at some point, so I hope you'll uh, bear with me. Um, all being well, we'll have a Christmas update coming up tonight. We'll see how this uh, recording goes, first of all, though. Uh, so we're going to start off with the central England temperature. So uh, this is how we're currently standing uh, with Hadley up to the 15th of uh, December, which is yesterday, of course. We're currently sitting at 6.9 degrees, an anomaly of 2 degrees above average. So, it's been a very mild first half to um, to December, to say the least. Uh, and it looks like it's going to stay pretty mild over next week as well. And this is encompassing the cold snap that we've just been through, of course. So, it looks like it's going to be an appreciably milder than average December. It gave a winter... 2018-19 off to a mild start. Uh, now we forecast a slightly colder than average winter, of course, so we won't want to see this uh, anomaly continuing into January. It often means very little what uh, what weather you get in December in terms of the overall winter. Um, many cold winters do start off with fairly mild. Uh, Decembers. We had this a lot in the 1980s, for example, all of those uh, cold winters that we had in the middle of the 1980s, 84, 85, 85, 86, 86, 87, uh, the trilogy of cold winters through the middle of the 1980s. They all started off with mild uh, Decembers. It wasn't until January and February that uh, they, get, they got colder. So we was never expecting much in the way of cold weather from December, although we did say we was looking to get at least one fairly potent uh, spell of cold weather to tell us that the winter forecast was on the w on the right track. I mean, we have had uh, a cold a few days. I'm not sure it's quite as cold as uh, we would have wanted to see for the winter forecast, but I'm not overly concerned about winter forecast at the moment. If we get to the middle of January, let's say we get to the 16th of January, and uh, we've not had any cold weather, we're not seeing any signs of cold weather, then I would start getting a little bit more concerned about winter forecast. At the moment, I'm not overly concerned, even though it does look as though December will be coming out as, a, an, as an appreciably mild of an average month. One of the reasons I'm not overly concerned is what's happening in the stratosphere over the North Pole. So this is the latest in terms of the GFS operational run, uh, in terms of stratospheric temperatures, um, for the uh, next couple of weeks. So we're starting off today on the 16th of uh, December at 10 HP, which is one of the top levels of the atmosphere and stratosphere. We've got these blue and purple colours, we've got the yellows and greens around the edges. And as we run through, you'll see that uh, we get this sudden stratospheric warming occurring over Siberia. Those red colours, dramatic red colours appearing over Siberia around the 22nd of December through to Christmas Eve. Still on course, it's been modelled exceptionally well by the GFS. It's been running with this since around 384 hours away. It's been remarkably consistent about this sudden stratospheric warming over Siberia. It's never really uh, wobbled or wavered on it. And it's still all on course, this warming for uh, for um, Siberia. question is whether we get this into the uh, North Pole itself. You see that uh, we definitely warm the stratosphere over the North Pole as we go beyond Christmas. We're up to the 30th of December. You see those green and yellow colours pushing the blue colours out. Um, this isn't a split of the uh, of the polar vortex, though. This is a displacement of the polar vortex. So those warm temperatures at 10 HPA are kind of like displacing the polar vortex southwards into, well, at this point, into sort of northern Europe um, and also into the Atlantic as well. What we're really looking for is a split, uh, seeing these blue colours splitting apart. And when that happens, we will get a reversal of the zonal winds. And that tells you that you have had then a genuine 
sudden stratospheric warming. This is the parallel GFS run. So again, we've got these blue and purple colours here over top of the pole. Uh, at the moment, we run through over the next few days. You'll see that again, we get this sudden stratospheric warming occurring over Siberia before Christmas. Those vibrant red colours uh, appearing there. And as we go through into Christmas, that uh, warming uh, penetrates in towards the North Pole. Um, and you see that with this one, with the parallel GFS, we are then showing signs of splitting the vortex. See how these blue colours are kind of like being pulled out from both sides. And uh, it looks like we're about to infiltrate another warming, these uh, yellow colours around the Atlantic and the UK and Spain and Portugal. It looks like we're about to infiltrate them into the North Pole at the same time we have this uh, other warning, uh, warming from Siberia uh, on the other side of the pole. And if we could run, this is New Year's Day, if we could run on another day or so, I suspect we would see a complete split of these blue colours. We would infiltrate the greens and the yellows, and then that would be a genuine uh, a genuine reversal of the zonal winds. And uh, we'd be able to say that that is a proper sudden stratospheric warming event that's occurred over the uh, Arctic. This is from weatheriscool.com. Uh, this is showing the CFS V2 stratospheric temperature forecast and the uh, GFS uh, stratospheric temperature forecast with the GFS ensembles. The black line here is kind of like the trend line. Uh, and you'll see that uh, the GFS ensembles are forecasting us to get a reversal of the zone of winds. That's zero just there. So if you get to that or go under it, then you are reversing the zone of winds at 10 HPA over the North Pole. So we're starting off that right now. We are already seeing uh, a weakening of the zone of winds, um, but it's going to weaken a lot more over the next couple of weeks. We're going to drop down to here. Uh, so that is going into reversal territory. That is a reversal of the zone of winds. Uh, and again, it's a, it would be a um, split in the polar vortex, most likely. And uh, that would be a genuine uh, sudden stratospheric warming. Some of these GFS summer members now are going down to a very, very low level indeed. This red dash line is um, how the stratospheric temperatures performed last year at 10 HPA. So uh, what we see is that uh, through sort of the earlier part of uh, last winter, winter 2017-18, have quite a, a very strong zonal wind. You'll notice that through February, this is the month of February just here, we see this red dashed line absolutely collapsing. That is the sudden stratospheric warming that occurred uh, in the early part of February 2018, but eventually led us by the end of the month to the beast from the east. And uh, you'll see the kind of level some of these GFS ensemble levels are going down to now, this sort of level, minus 20, is very close to the sort of level we was at last February, or back in February, uh, when we had that sun stratospheric wind that led us to the beast from the east. So some of these um, GFS ensemble members, not the ensemble mean, that's this thicker green line just here, which does go to a very low level, it does go to a reversal of the zonal winds, but not down to that level. But some of those GFS ensemble members are taking us very close to the kind of sun stratospheric warming and uh, zonal wind reversal that we had last year uh, or last winter. Most of the CFS V2 uh, members, also indicated by the uh, pink and the blue line, uh, are also going down to a very low level. So it's all on course. What's happening in the stratosphere has been very well modelled. It's still on course. We're going to get a sudden stratospheric warming over Siberia. Looks like a significant warming will take place over the Arctic. It'll move into the Arctic. And then we look to see whether we just displace the polar vortex or whether we split the polar vortex. If you want cold and blocking uh, during January, you're going to be looking for a split of the polar vortex and a complete reversal of the zone of winds. We should wait and see. ECMWF is also uh, forecasting this very consistently now. So um, this is from the University of Berlin, and it's the uh, 10 HPA uh, temperature and geopotential height forecast. Uh, from the ECMWF for December the 22nd, there's that major warming occurring over Siberia, again indicated by those red colours. The North Pole itself indicated on this chart is where we've got this black uh, cross just here. So uh, again, we've got this dramatic warming taking place over Siberia. <laughs> Excuse me, over Siberia on the 22nd. 
And then we get through to 25th, Christmas Day. We're moving that warming into the North Pole from Siberia. Uh, much warmer temperatures infiltrating into the North Pole on the uh, 25th of December, on Christmas Day, uh, which is day 10 uh, with the ECMWF. Uh, we're also seeing signs of this um, affecting uh, lower down as well. So this is That was 10 HPA, which is kind of like the top level of stratosphere, uh, or virtually top level of stratosphere. Um, this is 30 HPA, a little bit lower down, closer to the troposphere. And that is, again, showing uh, by Christmas Day, we have got quite a significant warming of the uh, tropos of the um, stratosphere at 30 HPA, closer to the troposphere, beginning to take place over Siberia. Not yet at this point, moving into the North Pole itself, but I suspect if we ran on another couple of days, which we can't, but if we could, we would probably see that warming infiltrating into the North Pole again. Uh, and then we've got the zonal wing forecast from the E7 WF, so at 1 HPA, which is kind of like right at the very, very top of the stratosphere we see that again we are forecasting a reversal of the zonal wings that's zero just there the zero line that's where we are right now we're actually going to see a bit of an increase in the uh, strength of the zonal wings in the next two in the next two or three days next few days but by the time we get through to christmas day we are having a reversal of the zonal wings not yet this is a box just here showing the zonal wings at 10 and 30 hpa not yet seeing uh, those lines dipping down uh, into a reversal. We will know when the ECM is forecasting a reversal. We'll see those lines do something like that at um, 10 and 30 HPA. So it's all on course, this stratospheric warming, and we're going to have to wait and see what the potential impacts of it could be. We know that very often when we get a sudden stratospheric warming, particularly one that infiltrates into the North Pole, and particularly one that splits the uh, the um, polar vortex, when we get a split in polar vortex and a reversal of the zonal wings, we know that two or three weeks, maybe a week to two to three weeks further on, we tend to get an increase in northern blocking. Northern blocking, high pressure blocking over the pole is a route to push cold air out of the pole, down into big latches. And so many of our coldest outbreaks in the UK and Europe tend to be preceded by a sudden stratospheric warming, a split of the uh, polar vortex and a reversal of the zonal wind. So this could be very significant for January. And it's a reason that despite the fact December is going to come out rather significantly milder than average, I'm not overly concerned at the moment about the winter forecast itself. Right, so having a look at when the next couple of weeks, uh, I mean, it is going to be primarily mild, as we can see from the GFS ensembles. Uh, so we're looking at London today. The red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London. You see that uh, we're going to be generally above average. We've got a little bit of a zonal sideways showing up. So we've got warmer and cooler and warmer and cooler and warmer and cooler sectors alternating with one another. Uh, maybe it looks like go through to a more definitively mild of an average uh, period actually for the very end of December into the start of January. The same, uh, GFS is just coming up to New Year's Day now, just to New Year's Day. Uh, so we see that in the final sort of four or five days of um, December, it does look as though the temperatures are lifting up quite definitively. At the same time, it's beginning to dry out as well. So plenty of precipitation spikes coming up to Christmas and then after Christmas, looks like we're going into uh, something of a drier interlude. So presumably, temperatures lifting up, it's turning drier. Presumably, high pressure is building. We're starting to raise pressure. That could be in response to the sudden stratospheric warming, actually. Uh, the very first initial response to a big warming of the stratosphere can often be to raise heights through the mid-latitudes. And initially, that can be actually quite mild. If you remember back to 2013, we had uh, a big warming of the stratosphere in the first week of January 2013. And uh, initially what that seemed to do was raise the heights across southern Europe and turn us very mild. So for a few days during the early part of January 2013, we actually, actually had a very mild uh, week during that opening week. And then it got progressively colder as that high pressure carried on moving northwards, moving from the mid-latitudes, moving up into uh, sort of northern blocking, that then switched us from being rather mild, as we was initially, 
to quite a bit cold. So that might actually be, although it seems a bit perverse, it might be uh, this warming that's happening here and this drying trend could be that the GFS samples are just starting to pick up the first atmospheric response to this warming of the stratosphere. It may not be, it may be a coincidence, but it is the kind of thing that does happen quite a lot when you get these warmings of the stratosphere initially. Temperature anomalies for the next week from the 16th to 24th of December, milder than average. There's going to be another mild week coming up. Precipitation anomalies generally average to above average. So a mild and wet week on the way. This is how the GFS is looking for Wednesday. Low pressure close to the country, bringing showers all along as well as rain. That low pressure continues up to the weekend, moving in from off the Atlantic, bringing further bouts of rain. Then we go through to next weekend. Low pressure is never far away, so it will be a case of showers or longer spells of rain through the course of next weekend. Uh, we get to Christmas Eve, and it still looks rather unsettled. And then on Christmas Day, we push that low pressure away. <coughs> Excuse me again, and we start to get some high pressure building out to the northwest. That just turns winds into a north or northeast. So that's a little bit cooler, so slightly cooler day coming up on Christmas Eve. Then on Boxy Day, we start to build in that high pressure, and we go off into the period between Christmas and New Year, dominated by high pressure. Its position is moving around day by day, but it's keeping us mostly dry and settled through Christmas up to New Year. That's as far as we can go with the GFS operation run. It takes us to New Year's Day. We've got high pressure at 1,040 millibars centred over the top of the country. So evidence of that drying, um, but also milder trend from uh, Christmas through to New Year. Bear in mind, that's milder in terms of the upper air temperatures. Down on the surface, underneath the winter high pressure, it could probably be quite frosty and foggy. Of course, beyond this, it would be a case of where does this high pressure go? Does that start pushing northwards then? and turn into a northern blocking feature. That will be the question through the first half of January. The parallel GFS looks like that. So again, unsettled conditions in uh, the weekend. Low pressure is going to be moving in from off the Atlantic, dominating the weather. We're up to Christmas Eve, but another low pressure is moving through, bringing us another cloudy, wet day. That clears out of way. We do raise pressure a bit to our west and turn the wind into rather chilly northwesterly. So Christmas Day... Uh, on that scenario, it looks um, mainly dry away from the north, where there could be some wintry showers. And uh, just a nice sort of seasonal Christmas day. Probably quite a chilly feel. Not too bad at all if you want a Christmas afternoon uh, walk after your dinner. And then we go through to Boxing Day. High pressure is still dominating then. And it becomes increasingly influential through the course of the um, week from Christmas to New Year. High pressure sitting Close to the country, that's where we finish up with the parallel GFS on New Year's Day. High pressure is in control. It's not in anywhere to produce anything particularly cold in terms of Arctic or Siberian air masses. It would probably be cold from frost and fog underneath that high pressure. But if you looked at the upper air temperatures, they'd be relatively mild. No sign up to New Year's Day of taking that high pressure north or east. But again, we would uh, have to wait and see. So the GM is looking like this, and uh, it's looking all very unsettled over the coming week into the week running up towards Christmas. Low pressure close to the country, um, and just stays unsettled up to Christmas as well with the GM. No sign of anything cold, not overly mild either, just unsettled with showers or longer spells of rain. And the ECMWF finally for these charts are looking really unsettled through the course of the coming week. Does have higher pressure up towards Scandinavia, interestingly, just before Christmas, Saturday 22nd. It does have a bit of a Scandinavian high, but for us, we're still dominated by this low pressure and by the uh, westerly winds. That takes us to Christmas Eve, and again, it's all looking rather unsettled, low pressure, never far away. It's trying to pull up some very mild air from the south, but I'm not sure that's going to come to a great deal, away from southern parts of the country anyway. Just again, a case of showers or longer spells of rain running into Christmas, and that's how we look at day 10, Boxing Day. Low pressure is over top of the country. Expect more rain uh, with that. Finally, just have a look at the uh, ECMWF postage stamps from the ECM Ensembles. This is via the Icelandic Met Office. This is showing all the options that are still on the table within the ECM Ensembles for Christmas Day. So we've got 14 Ensemble members that have an area of above average heights 
around Greenland and extending down weekly into the Atlantic of a trough is over top of the country. They're trying to be cold, those ensemble members, but are probably still bringing in a wind from a westerly direction. So just rather showery and temperatures probably close to average with those. Another 13 ensemble members have much higher pressure in the Atlantic to the west of the UK with low pressure to the east. <coughs> Excuse me again, and we bring the jet stream and the flow down from the northwest like that. They're mainly dry and probably a bit of a chill to the air as the wind's coming in from the northwest. Another 10 have a deep area of low pressure in the North Sea just to our east. Uh, so again, these are trying to be cold, but not quite making it. They're kind of like bringing in a west to slightly northwesterly flow. They're more unsettled though, they bring quite a lot of wet to ever. Another nine has high pressure up to, and I remember these are all the options for Christmas Day, so there's still a lot of options playing out uh, in the ECM ensembles at the moment for Christmas Day, uh, with high pressure up to the north, but also to our east as well. They're mainly dry and settled. Technically, they're probably quite mild, bringing the air up from a southerly to south easy direction, but... But with high pressure close to us, probably frost and fog. And then we've got a minimum option, five of them, that uh, show quite a strong blocking signal up to the north. They've got high pressure blocking from Scandinavia to Greenland with uh, low pressure to the southwest of the country. And these could be genuinely cold. These could be bringing cold air from the east. But there's only five out of 51 uh, ensemble members within the Eastern Ensemble sort of doing that. And so um, those ones uh, are not particularly well supported by the ECM ensembles. And then I think we'll leave it there. So um, it's not like it's going to be an unsettled week coming up. And up to Chris is actually looks like it's going to be staying unsettled and also relatively mild as well. Uh, we will get a couple of very mild days, I think, but overall not a particularly mild period, just close to average temperatures probably and unsettled, taking us up to Christmas. Christmas itself might turn a little bit chillier, but we're not talking about uh, real cold weather. And then I think the trend after Christmas up to New Year is to increase pressure. So pressure will rise. It'll probably turn drier. It won't be Arctic or Siberian cold. Um, and the upper air temperatures, as we've explained, will probably be relatively mild. But on the surface, it may actually be quite cold running up to New Year. It might be frost and thaw, that type of uh, thing going from Christmas to New Year. Then after that, it's going to be a case of watching what's happening with that high pressure. Will it go north via this warming of the stratosphere? If it does, then uh, we'll be on course for much colder and more wintry conditions in January. So despite the fact that December is going to come out as a mild month, overall, I'm not concerned about winter forecast yet because it looks like things are still setting up for a cold January. If we get to the middle of January and we haven't had any appreciable cold and there's no sign of northern blocking, then it will be a case of getting a bit worried about winter forecast. But at the moment, I think it still is all broadly on course for what we was expecting for this winter. Right, so this evening we'll have your, uh, I think it's update number 22 now, 21 or 22. Anyway, I'll have a Christmas update coming up for you this evening around 7 o'clock. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.